Hello everyone and welcome back to SGTV. So it is National Apprentice Week and last week we had Mark Allison from Apprentice One to One on the show and Paul and Terry from Napier. Uh, this week in the series we're going to be having Neil McManus, a returning guest from Leicester College. Say hello Neil, wherever you are. Hi everyone. Hi Neil, it's good to have you back. Thanks. And we've also got George Kenyon and Stuart Wiles from Leicester College. So uh, thank you both for joining us. If you're here, say hello, wave. Hi, uh, yeah, hey, how's it going? Hi, hey, mate. It's good to have you both on the show. So as I said, it's Apprentice Week this week. So we've, we're mainly focusing on what people are offering in support wise for apprentices. So um, I'm going to start off. Uh, well, let's start with you, Stu. Um, so as Neil has mentioned to me before this episode, so you're a mature student. Um, so where, where did you start with your apprenticeship? I started in 2016, I did a multi-trade uh, apprenticeship, which was through Leicester City, City Council and at Leicester College. So I did that for two years. Then in 2018, I got offered an electrical apprenticeship. So th this is kind of like my second career. I did 16 years in, in the beer industry, so working pubs. I just had enough of that and thought, move into construction, and now I'm doing this electrical apprenticeship. Okay, is that to just off your own back to go and be an electrician? Yeah, well, it started off to get into the trade, really, into the building trade, and I really enjoyed that. And then, as I say, Leicester City Council offered some jobs, and they also offered some more apprenticeships to do the electrical side. So four of us got taken on from Leicester City Council to do the electrical apprenticeship. Uh, so the, the, the council are, are funding this for you then? Yes, they are, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. so that's quite a, a good, good spot to be in then, really. Oh, yeah, fantastic, yeah. yeah so you, you couldn't hack the beer then? Is what you're um, saying. I couldn't, I couldn't have getting older and working with a lot of people who probably about George's age could be, I could be their dad. So I was just like, nah, I don't yeah. want to do this anymore. Okay, let's go over to you, George. So how did your apprenticeship come about? Um, we were mainly just in school, obviously not getting on in school, not being the brightest student. And then um, it was more, it was art. I, I didn't really like school, never really wanted to be in school so the best option for me was not carrying on with college and staying full-time education it was going into the work industry and maturing more than anything and just getting you know putting your place and growing up a lot quicker than probably your average 18 17 year olds yeah did you start the your apprentice before the pandemic or during uh before yeah so i literally came out of school in uh, the 2019 and i got the apprenticeship by August okay. 2019, and that's when I started. So both you and Stuart are now learning during what's going on at the minute. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. And how would you say your learning, your development has been affected by what's going on? Well, I think in, in terms of kind of being taught, we were, we're it's all right doing all the sort of theory side of things. You can still do that on Zoom or on Teams as we do it in college, or you can kind of do it on the internet online. But it's a bit, it's different not having the practical side of things to to be learning the kind of hands-on stuff. I mean, I'm quite lucky I get to do quite a lot on site anyway, but I think in terms of instruction within the college, that meant a lot to me because I work better when I see things and able to try them out for myself. So yeah, I think it has, the practical side of things has definitely had an effect on me. How about you, George? Um, yeah, I mean, with in terms of theory and that, me being an 18-year-old lad sat in, sat in your room trying to do work just doesn't work you know it, it's not it's not ideal but at the end of the day I've got it is my job it's my future at the end of the day and I've got to try somehow to to make it work but in terms of practical side of things like uh, Stu was saying it's it is, it is a bit frustrating but we, I haven't been furloughed since the first lockdown therefore I have been quite lucky with my work to still carry on and like some other companies who lads my age might not they might have got the boot so yeah in some ways I'm, I'm quite lucky to be where I am do you think it's affected your development though like you say with the practical side of things if you're stuck at home compared to someone who did their apprenticeship without a pandemic going on I wouldn't say so much a practical side because because of work and I'm doing a lot lot in work it I would say more it's for me it's more the theory, theory part trying to concentrate and handling assignments when there's not really with 16 on us on like a meeting call and you know it's not it's not 
I can't really get to grips with it as well as like some people might be able to. I think you're right, George. Everything you're saying there, it's really difficult. It's difficult for, from a lecturing side uh, to get that engagement as well. Uh, you know, when you're in a class, it, it, most lecturing staff can see, you know, you're struggling to grasp oh, yeah. something. You can see frustration on your face and we can talk and help and you've got uh, your colleagues, your peers at the side of you that you can have a group discussion with and share things. And, and I suppose all you've got at the moment is your mobile phone yeah. uh, and, and, and teaching like this. And it, it's really difficult. And I think you guys are really doing an amazing job to think, you know, what COVID's doing to the industry and to, to your learning and your progression. Uh, it, it's difficult. You, you've still got exams to pass within a period of time. Uh, and unless you're willing to do the research and put the hard effort in, you, you know, it's going to be difficult for you to succeed. Uh, and I, th I really think you got, you know, the apprentice full-time student are, are really doing uh, fantastic to be online and engaged. It's when you set that target you, that you need to be disciplined to go and do and complete that work and also have the confidence to ask us questions. I, I don't understand this. I don't get online again, send an email, whatever, and talk to us. Yeah, so we're there to support you. Yeah. Have you found found Neil helpful throughout all of this? This is your chance to grass him in now. <laughs> I've, I've, I don't get the privilege to teach these two. Okay. Uh, so, uh, and, and obviously, uh, the, the staff they've had, you know, I've seen them around the college. I've spoke to Stu and, and worked with Stu, but I've not had the privilege to teach them, so... Uh, and, and you've had a couple of changes with staff, haven't you, recently? You had Nick, Craig, uh, and, and currently, you know, due to it, we, we've got recruitment in online, so you, they're getting a different member of staff, uh, and we want to get a member of staff in place too. Yeah, I mean, like you were saying about staff, we obviously, from our class, I don't know about Stu's, but we, we started our um, apprenticeship with Rob Petit. And yeah about halfway through the first year, we then had a change of teacher. And then we yeah. had, I think we've, we must have had about four or five different yeah, teachers. Yeah, you had to, obviously you'd have one for practical and one for theory. And obviously, yeah. you know, can't do much about Rob retiring no, exactly. at <laughs> that age. But uh, what we, no. hope, you know, will do, and again, you know, I'm there at a college. Exactly. And, and you need to be aware, you know, you've got a good, strong team with Nick Waldron, Prinnell, uh, uh, that you need to talk to and say, I need help with this, I need support. Mm. Yeah, don't That's try and just thing, take yeah. it on board and say, I'm learning, ask. Knowing you've got support there is what it's all about, isn't it? Let's go, over to, let's talk about practical um, experience. Stu, you sort of touched on this a little bit. So what's your experience of uh, practical being like during all of this? Your practical learning? Yeah, as I say, I, mean, I was actually off work for seven months from the first lockdown. So I lost out quite a lot of time considering I'm kind of, I'm coming up towards need, needing to do my AM2. So I've just, I've got my 10 hour practical to do in college. And then I, when I've done that my MDQ stuff, it's my AM2. So I'm really keen to, to get the hands on side of things. Again, I am lucky that within the council, we have a number of different kind of properties and we have multi-occupancy properties. So I get experience of doing domestic work as well as kind of the communal areas. So working a lot of, uh, conduit, steel conduit and single. So sort of different things you won't see in households. So I have been quite lucky, but I've also gone off my own back and done a bit of work with another electrician. So rewiring houses and things like that. So I've kept my hand in. But for me, I, I think, I presume it's different to George because this is now, this is my second career. So I've, I've got to take things on very, very differently to, to say someone like George who's who's looking for their first kind of career. So my, my learning is very different, I think. Would you say, George? Yeah, I'd agree with that. I'd, I'd agree. Like, I'm, I'm coming into this fresh, new. I've not had any years' experience behind me. You know, it's one of the things, but my, like you say, the practical and the hands on bit's more important for you at the minute. Mine's mm -hmm. more the theory and getting these exams out of the way and then time to concentrate on the sort of practical side, the hands on. You're currently in your second year now, George. Yeah. At yeah. college. Yeah, yeah. So you, you've got another 18 months at college plus your year on site day before you hit the AM2 yeah. stage. 
that's when you're really going to start hitting hitting up the uh, the practical side of things, getting your getting your hands dirty. Yeah, that's what I mean. I mean, work it, it with with my work. It's a lot of domestic. It's not it's not like the big factories. It's a lot of you go into house every day. You do you do this? You do that? It's not like Stu said with the conduit and all of that. It is literally purely housework. Are you the only apprentice, George? I used to be a lad called Dan Swallow. Um, right. And he he was on his farm. So he did a two-year course at the college. And we've got an aircon business as well within right. our firm. Um, and he chose to take that on full-time and drop the whole electrical course. Right. I um, remember Dan, yeah. Yeah, now he's on a full-time. Uh, so he's not class an apprentice anymore, right. but he was when he came in. So, yeah, I am technically the only apprentice there. Let's, um, let's talk about obstacles. Um, obviously, without going into too much depth of what's going on out in the world, we all know what's going on. Um, but it's going to put obstacles in place for learning, for working, for earning. So while, while we're on you, George, let's, um, have you got any obstacles that you've had to sort of overcome that, you, that stand out for you? Um, no, I can't say there would be any obstacles I mean I've had I've had like problems like maybe at home let's say with like family and trying to keep safe whilst going into work maybe yeah it just shows but the work I think I think the part that winds me up the most is people moan about how oh you you need to wear masks this that and the other yeah when we'll go into a house every day to work there'll be people who will literally come stand next to you and stand there having a conversation with you and they're not even a metre away from you, let's say. Yeah, and I suppose that could impact your um, your learning, your earning, for example. Say if you, depending on if you're, if you're on a test and trace or whatever, and that person has come into contact and you've got to self-isolate, depending on your work, um, you know, set up, it could affect your earning. So it's a difficult time, obviously. And like I say, we've all got our obstacles and finding a way to overcome them is is one thing. It's all part of learning. And I'm sure Neil has plenty of ad advice for all the little things people in the trade are going to be overcoming. So um, let, let's go on to, on to Stu, though. Um, so you're, you're working quite a lot. So what sort of obstacles are you facing during all this? Well, yeah, I, I think there is... I, I agree with George, really. I think the perception of, of, of us as tradespeople and, and what the pandemic's done to, to people's you know, general ideas and yeah, you get people who are cautious and wear a mask and you get other people who are literally, as George says, walk up to you in the, in the street and because we've got a council uniform on, they're just like, oh, you're a Leicester City Council and then they'll start complaining about the bins and you kind of, then they're in your face without a mask on. So that is, again, I think the public is, and, and the public's perception in a way is an obstacle. Um, I mean, and, and also the work, when, when we first started in the first lockdown, the um, Leicester City Council just decided to put all apprentices off work. So as again, that set, the seven months I had off was was definitely an obstacle to my learning. And just then we had we were supposed to have an exam in back in March, and now that's been postponed three times. So you kind of again that's an obstacle for me because as an older learner, I have to read things over and over again to understand them. Once I understand them, it's brilliant, but it just takes a little bit longer to go in. Yeah. So I'm having to relearn stuff constantly to be ready for the exam when we get back to, to college, whenever that may be. Yeah, so, yeah, that, that's that's and this is one of the crazy, crazy bits that are happening at the moment with COVID is that, you know, there's the encouragement for lads for, to get back out there in the construction industry and work. And within the college, we've got strict, really strict guidelines that we're adhering to. You know, everyone wearing a mask in and that and social distancing. Uh, but then you go into a, someone's house and you'd have a mask and everything. But because they're in their own house, they don't wear a mask because they just think, oh, you know, it's my environment. It's safe in here. Where, where it's where it's not and and maybe that's something again it's that guideline uh that if you want this work completing uh then you know please stay keep social distancing away from the contractors uh it's really difficult for the college at the minute uh we the colleges across the country are screaming out uh to open up again because 
unlike academic routes, we're, we're vocational routes and it's hands-on and, and people like George are missing this hands-on. When they're doing theory, it's good that you can link the theory with practical outcomes uh, and, and you can't do that over uh, Teams or, or Zoom or whatever other platform people are using. And we're just waiting for the government to say, hello, open up come back into college you know we, we are planning to open again on the 8th of march but leicester's a very high on the list of covid at the moment cases it is coming down um and if the government say you've got to shut down you've got to shut down um colleges are not set up to do remote exams yeah. Uh, so they're big barriers and it's just affecting, you know, it's not good for apprentices. Uh, what's good is they're both still in employment. And, uh, and I know that Stu works for the city council, one of the biggest employers in, in the city. Uh, and they're really positive about training. Uh, and then George, smaller company, but again, uh, obviously recruiting apprenticeship and, and positive outcomes from them. They're both still in work at the moment and business must be flourishing in for them. Neil, have you found that um, enrolment has been affected through all this? It's a different approach. Uh, it's straight, even it starts from schools. So obviously the schools are uh, completing the PS16. We've got a good marketing team that are talking to the schools and liaising with the schools. Uh, and we're having to do a lot of virtual marketing. Uh, so, you know, this is what your course will be. Uh, we start our first welcome events next week, which are recruitment. And uh, so students have been sent to link. Uh, what I will say is electrical looks very, very uh, promising. Again, a lot of applicants at this stage uh, to become electricians and uh I'll let you know how that one goes. Yeah. And it will be, you know, it will be online. Uh, yeah. What's your, what's the student retention been like? It, it's really good. Uh, again, um, ooh, I should be able to remember that from earlier today, but, you know, it's in the, it's in the I-90s at the minute. Um, now and again, we lose uh, the odd student to an apprenticeship, which is a positive outcome. Uh, which is still nice to see that companies at this stage are looking for apprentices. Uh, but, uh, you know, uh, retention's really good at the moment. Well, I don't know. George, have you lost many people out of your class? Uh, we've, yeah, we've lost about five, I'd say. Five. What, been made redundant or...? Um, some made redundant. Uh, I know one of them went into plumbing instead. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, it's more some of them choose they like a different trade or right. or something like to do with that. It's not it's not really dependent on them losing their job or anything because it was too early to yeah. really even consider getting sacked to be in the first year. It was more yeah. to do with if they decided they liked a different trade. Right. And yeah. That was it. And that sure. goes back to the recruitment when you're 16, not not knowing what trade to yeah, you know, to. It, I, I was like that in school. I felt, I felt like... A lot of my mates didn't know what they wanted to do. Um, we all ended up going into apprenticeships in the trades, but we've all kind of gone into something different, which yeah. actually has kind of worked out quite well for a future reference. But yeah, yeah, no, it's um, it being in school and then not really giving you the help you need to know what you. It, it almost felt like you were being rushed to to go into something too quick. And you didn't really have the time being 16 years old. Who knows what they want to do at that age? I don't know. But I, I for sure didn't know what I wanted to do. I was, I just went But you do something. now. Yeah, exactly. You're with the right company now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. George, you said that uh, you've got a lot of friends that um, floated from course, you know, decided to change courses, and now they've sort of found their courses. Do you find that um, not only in your trade, but across all the trades you're seeing amongst your, your friends, do you think there's um, any sort of anxiety about job security at this point? If I was to lose my job today, I would, I'd be stuck because the economy at the minute is it's not, it's not where you want it to be. You know, if I was to lose my job today, I, I, can, 
I can not guarantee getting a job for the next six months. I think it'd be. I think I think I'd really struggle being a young lad trying to find another apprenticeship with nothing behind me. Yeah. So that's that would be the biggest problem that I've got nothing behind me to show for what I've got or what I've done. I'll, I'll ask this to both you and Stuart. I mean, I was planning on doing this a bit later in the episode, but. Like you sort of said, there, there, there is that uncertainty, um, and especially from someone looking to get into an apprenticeship, um, you're potentially going to be earning less than a regular middle-income job at an apprentice level, but you've got the view that you're going to be earning more later on. So do you think that the short-term goal of earning fairly average for now could be putting apprentices off? Yeah, I would, I would say that. I'd say people... You look at all the shops now um, boosting their wages up because of the pandemic and people going to the shops and them needing more staff. I'd say it does put put people off a little bit, but in my eyes, it's if if you want to do that and you want to uh, and you stick to it, then your your later in life goal you will be earning double, potentially triple what they they will ever. Um, for the next couple of years, because that's all they'll be on for the rest of their life. Yeah. How about you, Stu? Because, Stu, you've come from a different career. So you've gone probably from earning a fairly decent wage to what I'd imagine would be a lesser wage whilst you're in your apprenticeship um, level uh, to, to then earn better. But in the meantime, you, there's, there's that shortfall. So how's that been for you? Yeah, I, I mean, it's, it is very different for me. For me, I mean, I took a, a, about a £15,000 pay cut when I first started an apprenticeship. Um, but, you know, luckily with the support of my wife, we were financially, we'd worked it out anyway. So we could take that hit and we kind of planned for it. Um, so for me, the money side of things didn't, didn't matter. It meant that we had to cut back a little bit. Um, but for me, it wasn't about the money. It was about my my health my mental health my you know the fact i needed to change my job at the end of the day so uh, as i say the finances although they're important weren't the be all and end all and now we kind of a few years down the line where we've, we've got plenty of money let's put it that way we don't need to worry about it anymore so i think i think there is the motivation for a few do- years down the line is also there definitely yeah. you've got to be thinking you know this tra- all this training is very much worthwhile because you know eventually you can as you say command a decent well a very very good salary doing this kind of work so you're glad you made that switch? Oh, yeah, without a doubt, yeah. It's been, been a brilliant move for me. Neil, uh, I want to come back to you. Um, so do you think education will, will ever be the same as what it was before this pandemic? Uh, this, this, it's not only the pandemic that's adding to the apprenticeship. Obviously, there's massive changes going around in education at the moment with the introduction of T-levels, transition programmes. So for people... Uh, who are unfortunate not to get on a uh, an apprenticeship course or lose their jobs, lose their apprenticeship, there needs to be a route back into education for them. So uh, there'll be big changes around uh, the, the way learners learn. Uh, the qualifications are changing, moving away from multi-choice questions to written answers uh, and research work, project work. Um changing the the type of apprentice i suppose that will have uh the softer skills you know, you know a lot of young people uh leave school without the soft skills how do i communicate yeah how do i write a report how do i write emails etc they'll lose they don't come with that those skills and the new qualifications will help them to develop that uh, and obviously uh, what I'm hoping for as well is that uh, the college running study programs will have a lot more interaction with apprentices, whereby we're looking that people on study programs would be able to go and work for the companies when their apprentice is at college. Yeah. So yeah. education, there's going to be big, big changes in the way uh, delivery, study. Uh, it, I'm, I don't think uh, online learning will ever replace the social experience uh, that, you, that you get in a classroom. Uh, and I don't think online learning, unless you really 
dedicated and you need to learn something like Stuart says sometimes he's more focused and George struggles. It, for George, online learning would never work. It, it, they still need that classroom, that interaction, that face to face with the lecturer who can support them. You know, it could be break time and George could just turn around and say, didn't quite get that. Where when they're on a social, you know, this type of site, uh, Zoom, and that, it just doesn't work. Yeah. Well, what we're seeing is a lot of big, mainly office based companies downsizing their premises and opting for things like this for Zoom or Teams, that kind of thing, and having their staff work from home um, and or having hot desks where you can have a quarter of the amount of space or, or whatever. Um, and I, I don't know if it's true, but do you think that there's any chance that governments who are funding education might look at that and think, oh, there's a, a chance maybe we can do that at colleges, sell off some of the buildings, make a bit of profit, which might seem great for the people trying to make money, but I can't imagine that would be good for students. No, I, I mean, I, I definitely not left to college because we, we haven't got enough space as it is, uh, and obviously we're looking to grow being the biggest provider in the city uh, to de to meet demand and the introduction of these new programs will need further new buildings so when you look at can certain jobs be carried out from home then for sure you know does a te teacher need to be on site uh 24 7 when if they've done the teaching could they be doing marking research at home could hr run from remote yeah so there are certain tasks that could definitely be done from home but i think in education uh, most colleges won't have enough space now you know I, I quite often struggle to find a classroom for 20 learners let's uh, let's go over to you Stuart. do you feel there's anything you've missed out on throughout all of this in terms of life or electrical i think it's um <laughs> mainly in terms of learning yeah, I, th I think, again, it's the social contact, really. I think it's very different, as it's been alluded to. In, in the classroom, you can bounce ideas off people. You can, as you say, you can ask the, the tutor a question. Whereas at the moment, I find it very, very difficult on teams to kind of get across. And, you know, you sat there, and I think there's only, there's only eight people in my group. But it'd be interesting to know what Neil's take on this and other tutors. You've got eight people in there, and I'm the only one with my video on. Because everyone else is just sat yeah. behind a black screen. Yeah, you you you're right, Stuart. For me, it's so frustrating. Mm. There's a couple of reasons here, uh, and, and it's you know a lot of students work off that as a mobile device, and it might not be as smart as mine. So ends that you have a you've got students that may be embarrassed about their social space that they're in. You could have parents at the background, you know, don't put your camera on in my out. There's lots of reasons why. Yeah, of um, I did some delivery uh, online uh, to evening mature students and we didn't have a phone on uh, or, or backgrounds on. My camera was on there and wasn't. Uh, and it's 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 so frustrating because I can't see you, your expressions on your faces where you're struggling. And the other thing is, if I'm trying to display something or do a drawing, you know, I'm switching from one screen to another screen. I lose that eye contact with you guys. You can't force anyone. And obviously, GDPR and everything that's around that, uh, there's nothing better for me than you all having your camera on. I've got my camera on. Uh, we're adults and yeah, yeah. but that, that's happening at some uh, my nephew can't have his camera on uh, and yet another school next door oh want well, you all in the class and you've all got your camera on while I'm teaching how about you George is there anything you feel like you've missed out on during all of this yeah uh, I feel I feel just like the, the whole the whole thing really the whole theory side of it being on it you know I'm, I'm 18 years old I've got a bloody PlayStation 4 in front of me. What 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 do I really want to be doing? Do I want to be sat on my phone listening? Because you can't. It's not like you can sit there jotting notes down. Because I can't do that in my room. But you know, like I say, having a PlayStation in front of you and, and you're there, and it's there in front of your eyes, and you're just like, even if I go downstairs to try to concentrate, it's it's the temptation of it still even being in the house and stuff like that, or going out, or you know, it's it's not. 
it's not something that I want to do. I'll be but... speaking to your parents, George. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you'll be getting yeah. a pen and paper for Christmas this year. Yeah. I've got, but that's what I mean. When I was in class, it's so the last time I was in college, I had Craig, um, who's now not my teacher. Got, yeah. yeah, and I've not got Craig anymore. But I got on really well with Craig because I felt like yeah. he, he understood how it is to be a young lad. And what what helped most was even on the online sessions that he did, he, would, he wouldn't just go through it twice, he'd go through it three times to make sure everyone knew. I feel like since we've had Caleb and another teacher and he does some he does everything completely different. And for me, it's yeah. hard going from teacher to teacher and having different ways of learning. And I'd say the way that Caleb learns, he's a great, great teacher, nothing against that. It's yeah. the way he teaches isn't the way I learn. And that's where I'm yeah. lacking it a bit. I um, know, and and that's really and I really appreciate that, George. And that's an honest and and what I'm going to say to you is, and hopefully Nick and Caleb and everyone will watch this, is you yeah. need to tell them. Because yeah. if you're in a class, you'll just go, I didn't get that. <laughs> when you're on the ER, students don't shout up and it's really no. difficult and frustrating for us as well. It's a learning curve for everyone, isn't it? Not, not only for students. This is all new to, to me, to, to lecturers, to inspectors, everyone. It's all going to be very different and... We've all got to sort of be patient with each other and support each other the best we can. Um, talking, of, talking of support, Neil, what sort of support have you found you've been having to, to do that you wouldn't necessarily have to pre-pandemic? A lot of them, believe it or not, have not got had IT equipment. Uh, there's an awful lot that haven't got Wi-Fi, you know, internet accessing, things like that, that we're having to work with. Again, different ways of learning. Students like like physical workbooks in front of them. They like a piece of paper with information on it rather than it being displayed on the screen. And it, it's trying to get those out to students when you've got COVID. It, it's the effect on, you know, the exams that it's frustrating. We can't do it online. Yeah. Exam. So, you know, set steward up with a computer securely safely. Yeah. Uh, so, changes. It, it, it's basically uh, the learning curve, the, the interaction with students. What, what about you guys? Have you found, other than, apart from the colleges themselves, um, what sort of tools have you found useful for, for learning or for support? Well, I've, I've used a lot of YouTube. So I think it, uh, Joe Robinson, I think that's one of the side, yeah. one of the guys who's been, I've got a, quite a lot from, and just yeah, general research online really. And I'm I quite happily ask ask questions. I'll I'll email a tutor or text them. I mean, going back to what you were saying about kind of contacting people, I think I don't know if this is true or not, George. But from what I see, a lot of younger people that I know who are apprentices are still don't lack the confidence to say I don't understand that, yeah. or they don't have the confidence to to type out an email to a tutor because it's not they don't feel comfortable doing it whereas in you know in a classroom they, they, they just do it straight away i think yeah i mean i'll admit it. I'll, to be honest with you I'll, i still don't even know how to bloody type up an email i, I don't know how you do it <laughs> I, I can't get it really get it right but it, it's just about learning i guess but i'd say the same with youtube i've i've been um as like you say with the practical side and stuff i found even uh watching electrical electricians in their daily life who record YouTube all day, every day and show their general work. I found watching them and then talking through it, everything that they do, even on the practical side, really helped. Because um, there's, there's a guy in Cor uh, Corby Tresham and he's one of the teachers there and he has his own YouTube account and he does it all video after video of what he does, what he... And it, it is quite helpful. It's really helpful, actually, for me. Neil, have you had any ex-students get in contact uh, looking for advice or anything like that? No, we obviously we, we've had a few uh, just inquiring what steps next to take. Uh, so for mature students, it'll be how do I get an MVQ? Uh, you know, uh, how, do you do an AM2, Neil? Uh, and and obviously with the shutdown, a lot of uh, we, we're getting a lot of inquiries around full cost delivery uh, testing inspection in the 18th edition, uh, which we just can't meet at the moment. Uh, 
you know, because of lockdown. Yeah. Which is frustrating when someone might need that for uh, a job. So let's try and finish the episode on a positive. Um, so I'll ask each one of you um, a positive experience that you've taken from the last uh, 12 months that really stands out for you. Let's start with you, Stu. Oof, wow. Um, I suppose it's... I, I found it quite difficult to be motivated uh, during the lockdown, just in terms of I'm a very social person. I miss the pub. I miss gigs. I miss all these sorts of things. So I think kind of really pushing myself to develop my learning, gaining more skills and, and putting myself out there to, to work um, has kind of motivated me to you know, push myself to finish my apprenticeship and get on with my, all my MVQ work. So, so although I've lost out on the kind of the social side of things, it's, it's pushed me towards getting my qualification. Taught you a lot of self-motivation, self-discipline. Yeah, you? exactly. Because I imagine it, it's, I'm, I'm a bit older, so I've been through school, I've been through university. I've, I've seen it all from those sides of things. So now it's, it's different. Whereas I suppose for George and younger people, it can be quite difficult to stay motivated. Um, but for me, yeah, sounds I've, I've had... about bloody 70 younger people. I feel 70, mate. <laughs> <laughs> what I will say, just to put in there, is one thing that everyone, every apprentice needs to take from this is how important your MVQ is and never miss an opportunity to collect evidence and record it. Because where students have left, uh, in their final years and this year we have had a few students uh, an odd few students that have been furloughed need to finish their apprenticeship but they've done nothing on the site direct but they've been doing this course for three years so what's one of the biggest things i'd say is if george if you have not done anything on your mvq you need to pick up the phone and talk to a member of staff and get your mvq done because that is your golden ticket. How about you, George? Now you've just been told off by Neil. How, how, any, uh, any positives for you that stand out? Looks like he's frozen. Let's go over to you, Neil, in the meantime. Any positives for you as a lecturer during this uh, past 12 months? Uh, the way the staff and students have adapted to the lockdown. Uh, I've got to say, at Leicester College, the students have been fantastic in trying, okay? And my staff uh, at Leicester College, the work and commitment that they're putting in to try and make this work so learners can achieve, is, it, it, it's outstanding. It really is. And that, that's what keeps me going every day. Knowing that my staff are doing it, students doing it, I'm positive and motivated. What um what advice would you give to anyone looking to start an apprenticeship? What advice would I give to anyone? First of all, I'd say before you do, try and get some work experience. Look on the government websites. Look on SGTV, eFix, Joe Robinson. Look and see what an involved in being an electrician because not every job's nice, clean, enjoyable. You know, sometimes the jobs are dirty and they're hard working when you're in small lofts in that. So have a look at what the jobs involve. What I can, all I can say is research it. For me, electrical is the future. You've got loads of electric cars coming on the market. You've got smart homes. You've only got to look at the Skullmore range of smart homes. And why wouldn't you want to be an electrician? OK, uh, so if you're looking for an apprenticeship, do some research, make sure it's the the one you want to uh, do. And you're committing for four or five years before you're really earning money. But it will open opportunities. It will open doors for you. How about you, Stu? Any advice you give to anyone? Yeah, I, I think they're well worth I mean, looking back on what I did, kind of, I, I do look back and wonder if I would have been better doing an apprenticeship when I did come out of school. But hey, ho, that, that's life. I, I, yeah, I think apprentices are brilliant. And I don't think, I think as George kind of mentioned, you don't know what you want to do at 16. But even if you get kind of a two year apprenticeship, you then get two years experience, you get two years of learning, you get two, two years of communicating with people. So I think whether that ends up being your final trade or your profession or not, you're still getting however many years of valuable experience 
in the real world at the end of the day. So they are brilliant for those people who don't want to continue learning in, you know, universities or going on to those sorts of professions. Hands-on apprenticeships are fantastic. Yeah. They bring so much to, you know, each individual. And I suppose there's no such thing really as bad experience because it's experience that you're going to learn from. And if you've done a course that you don't like, you've learned you don't want to do that and that might push you in a, 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 diff a different direction that's more suited to you. Yeah, again, I, th I think you can pick the positives out of anything as long as you're, you're prepared to do that. But it, it's also about putting the hard work in, isn't it? I'm sure, no, as Neil was saying, it is about doing the doing your MVQs, doing it, being motivated and doing it. And I'll, you know, I'll echo Neil's comments. I think the tutors have been amazing at the college during this period. They're always there if you need them. You know, they're adapting as well to the online stuff. So fair play to them. They're, they're doing a great job. So what's next, Stu? What are you most looking forward to about going forward from here? Going to the pub. Um, apart from that, just, yeah, my continued learning, getting my qualification. You know, I'm at a time of my life where I don't know what I really want to do next. So I might continue. I might have a look at further electrical qualifications because that's you know that's something that i could look into now or i could yeah. go into buying houses and doing them up i don't know this is what i mean i'm at the point now where i've got so many options and they're all positive um and yeah. that's that's because of the apprenticeship now you know in, in hopefully a year's time when i'm qualified and i'm earning more money brilliant the world's yeah. my oyster i reckon hey there's a future teacher for you <laughs> i'm not going down that room <laughs> i have to sit in a classroom with them neil i'm not i'm, I'm not doing that I have to ask, though, um, Stu, so you're, you're obviously a mature student, and how do you think the physical side of things is going to be in, say, 10 years' time for, for you? What, in terms of getting older and my, being able to do the work that I need to do? Yeah, I mean, it, it is a physical job. Every electrician will tell you it's a physical job. And I know a lot of people when they're, they're getting older. I'm not saying you're old, by the way. <laughs> when, <laughs> Neil I, I'm, I'm talking. 70, so. I'm talking more in the future because obviously you're going to be getting to that point sooner than someone like George. Um, so that might limit your time frame of where you, of what you want to do. Well, I mean that that's why I can look at kind of further educating myself and doing further electrical courses. And you know, if, if I am still with the council in ten years' time, maybe I'll have an apprentice with me who can be doing all that sort of things. I mean, I do, I keep myself fit. I'm, you know, I'm fairly limber. You know, I do have the odd ache and pain now anyway. So it's a sign of getting older. But yeah, you know, try and keep myself fit. And, and well, I could also go into the office with the council and become a QC. I mean, as the, I, could, I could go into training. I don't know. There's so many options for me. Yeah, and that's all stemmed from, from going down this route of an electrician. Exactly. And that's, what, that's the sort of thing, that's the kind of message I like to get to people. And uh, I'm sure uh, Neil does as well. It's you, you. You don't just become an electrician and that's it. You're, you're fitting boards or sockets. It opens up so many doors, um, and that's something we're going to explore more on SGTV. So that's something for our audience to look out for. Um, but in the meantime, how about you, Neil? Any anything in particular that you're most looking forward to going forward from here? Yeah, Man United winning the Premiership and the FA Cup, but I don't think that's going to happen this year, but I can still keep dreaming at the minute, mate. Yeah, I'm going to edit that out at the end of this. <laughs> uh, no, I'm just enjoying what I'm doing. It'd be great if we can get back travelling at some time. Uh, you know, let's get everyone injected. Let's safe practices let's get back into college and help all these apprentices achieve their qualifications uh that, that that's my focus and that's where i want to be all right then guys i want to thank you all for coming on i want to thank you Stu, neil george it's been a pleasure to have you joining us hopefully we'll get some of you on again neil i've no doubt we'll definitely have you back because you're always on here chatting our heads off and uh giving everyone some great advice so thank you to you all again um, if you like what you see here at SGTV, please make sure you like, subscribe, and hit the notification button below. We've got plenty of videos on here, and they're all there for you to help. So thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.